only shoot them in batches of three, and then I had to wait a moment for it to reset or finish writing the memory on it, whatever it's doing, before I could hit the shutter button again. So what that meant, oops, sorry, I meant to be there, sorry, to hit that shutter button again. So what that means is that there's a little bit more movement between the batches of three. So let's go back to this. And so there's one, two, three again, nicely lined up. And then here's the next one, three, four, and five. So nicely lined up, um, those are. And then eh, that one didn't really shift too much. Those didn't show that. Now it shifts again a little bit. So you see a little bit of movement in there. And this is one of those where I would say if you really, really, really wanted to take the time, you could turn on that live layer and go in there and try and tweak each one to be really, really precise. But it's not going to matter because I'm going to make this way easier by choosing a layer as my master layer and throwing that on top and cutting a hole in it. So back to this. Let's now choose a primary layer. That's going to be the first job here. So if we go back to the group, this is what our stack looks like. You can see if I look closely, I'm zooming even more than 100%, see some weird ghosting around the bars in here. Back here, these trees, there's definitely some echo happening in the leaves. See, look, like right there, there's double leaves, double leaves, a lot of doubling up happening here, some weirdness happening in here. It's definitely not right. Okay, so that's, that's what we know is not right. So now, let's go back to like this percentage. And as I start clicking through the different layers, see, there's what an original photo looks like. So there's the stack and the original. You can see it's a lot sharper, a lot clearer what's going on in the background here. So then all we need to do is find a layer that we like it's going to fill the screen, find a layer that we like that basically matches up pretty close to this original view. So I'm going to say right away, it's not going to be this one because you can see the fence line moving quite a bit. So let's try this one. And that works great. So that's the first one of the second sequence. So image number four. If I click on the live stack group, we can see what the merge looks like. If I click on number four with the option key held down, we see what that one looks like on its own. And that's looking pretty good. So basically, this and this are the same minus the difference in the uh, the waterfall here and of course the weird distortion stuff we're getting the weird uh, sh echoing we're getting so i'm going to go back to this one that i want and i'm going to option drag this guy up here to the top of the list to make a copy of that did i actually make a copy of it i don't think i did let's try that again um, undo undo hold down option it's option drag not it's not actually making a copy. Well, shame on you. In that case, we'll just copy it here, the old-fashioned way. Duplicate that. There we go. There's two number 40s now. We'll put that up on the top there. Okay. So now the number 40 is on the top, which means this bottom layer is completely hidden, right? It may as well not exist. But let's turn that back on. Add a mask. And we're going to do that by clicking on the little mask icon right there. Add a mask to that layer. And now I need to figure out, am I brushing a black mask or a white mask? Well, remember, this is one of the really cool things about working with Affinity Photo is that when you grab a brush, no matter what that brush is going to do, inside of the brush, before you even click, you see what the result is going to be. This is one of those features that to me is just like really sets Affinity Photo apart from everything else. It, it gives you that ability to see what you're going to get before you brush. Love it. So I go in here. And right now you can see that my, my paint color is set to white. And I, I can tell here that my mask is white. So obviously that's not going to do anything. But, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm not paying attention. So I grab my brush and I'm hovering over here and I'm not seeing... Oh, <laughs> well, I grabbed the brush and it automatically switched over to black. Okay, so it knows. It did that automatically for me. But look inside of the brush. You can see the waterfall, the merged waterfall, because that's what I'm going to be brushing through. So let's uh, I'm going to take the hardness on this down a little bit. It's not going to be quite so big. Oops, undo that. Let's try that again. There we go. Click on the hardness, bring that down a little bit, and maybe make this a little bit smaller. And come here, you get off of there. There we go. Make this a little bit smaller. Come on, smaller brush. There we go. And simply go in here and start brushing that around. And just brush in the waterfall because that's the part that I want to be soft and blurry all the way down to the bottom. And I can be sloppy because these edges are going to be just fine. If they kind of blend in a little bit, we're not going to be able to tell. And that is all there is to it. And voila. And there we go. So now I zoom back out. I've got perfectly sharp areas around here. These trees are perfectly sharp. This is all sharp because it's based off of a single layer. But the one waterfall bit is showing up. And if I were to, let's see, how can I do it before and after? I will, I will disable the mask. There's the before and after. That's pretty cool, right? What do you think? Is that kind of fun? Like super easy, right? You just take this series of images. Throw You've just watched a five minute sample of a live training video. 
To see the rest of it, head to photoapps.expert slash live where you can purchase and download it or sign up as a member. Members can stream any live training video as often as they like and have access to video tips and other exclusive member bonuses. To learn more about membership, head to photoapps.expert slash members. <laughs>